Welcome back to Empowered Homefront, where we talk about health, wealth, and relationships. And let's not forget about faith. And we're going to skill stack our way all the way to success and bring you on this journey with us. Kevin, man, what you got? Um, that was first intro, all, anyway, that was raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Um, I guess for people who are listening, um, Eric is put his big boy pants on and filmed the intro instead of a pre-recorded one. That's yeah. what we're going. Yeah, I liked it, man. Let's keep that one going. I like that kind of stuff. But um, uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll get into it today. I wanted to do so. We have this. We have this form that we fill out. And it's how we organize our podcast episodes. And the one I haven't picked yet is a Q&A session. So, Eric, I want to do a Q&A session with you because I know the thing that you're you're centered around with this wealth creation and empowered home front is the real estate investing. No? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. We could say that. Okay, cool. Uh, I picked out some questions about real estate if you're down for it uh, for people who are you know joining us on this podcast who understand that you can create wealth successful wealth through real estate investing because that's essentially what you were doing when I met you. I know you got a lot of experience. Yeah, that's that's the that's the game, dude. More people, more millionaires have been created through real estate than any other vehicle. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, like there's no other vehicle. Matter of fact, like these people like doctors, dude, like Doctor, you know, doctors and lawyers, this is this blew my mind. Like I'm I'm like I'm starting to meet more of these people. Dude, they don't make that good of a money. Like they may make 80, 60, 100,000. Like I know doctors that make that much. It's like crazy. And the reason why is because they're a doctor, but they never learned the business side of things, right? But then you get the successful doctors that have more money. Well, now they create a tax problem. And then they start building wealth through real estate because they start pumping it in there. But anyway, man, what you got? What what questions? All right. Question number one. And this is, I don't know how long you're going to go on this one, but we got time. So question number one for you, Eric. First, it's a two-parter. First, what piqued your interest in real estate? And then what made you decide, quote, this is for me instead of going, you know, full head on into like, say, stock trade and uh day trading opening a gym because i i know we may not look like it everybody who's watching the video on youtube which if you're not subscribed to the youtube channel hit that subscribe button and share it with people um we like lifting and fitness uh like i said Used we don't look to. like now that. i just got fat chipmunk face i know but you know you did opening a gym like why didn't you do any of those things why why did you say real estate is it dude this is uh I don't know if I can like spit this out quick enough, you know, in a nutshell, it's what I just said. I -hmm. discovered that more people, more millionaires, more multimillionaires are created through real estate than any other vehicle. So I looked at gold. I looked at silver. I looked at stocks. I looked at 401ks. I, I looked at, you know, all these other things that we're told um, that are good to invest in, right? Mutual funds, right? Um, what else is there, dude? Like, you know, we're, we're federal employees, so we got the, uh, TSP thing. Um, and then there's a, you know, J O B, right? What's that? Um, just over broke. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. I like it. But yeah, man, I mean, to answer that, answer that question dude i i i literally discovered that you know real estate creates more millionaires man and that's the thing that piqued my interest now funny story though how i got started in real estate um it, it greensboro training to be air traffic controller dude i was already you know successful air traffic controller in the air force uh, Nellis Air Force Base, which is one of the most busiest uh, Air Force bases we have for air traffic in the Air Force. Um, successful there, separated, coming to FAA. And, you know, I went from working, I don't know, 30 to 50 planes at one time to working two, three. And, dude, I was bored out of my mind. 
And not only was I bored out of my mind, but also I had all these people telling me how I was going to wash out and wasn't like, oh, you came from a busy base. Like, you're not going to make it here. And that was, it was that toxic energy that we, you know, we talk about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess, I guess actually, dude, I just, I just need to reach out and thank them. <laughs> right. <laughs> because like they made me bored. And one day I'm still in training, still not checked out, not struggling at all. And um, I walk across to the Marriott, and there was a real estate seminar that was going on. And, dude, I walk into the real estate seminar, find out it's this three-day event. I sit down, and I'm listening to, you know, these people who I have never heard of before tell me about these things in real estate. And he shares with me one thing, and I'll never forget this. And what he shared with me was is a solo 401K. Do you know what that is? No. So he shared with me what a solo 401k is. And it's not with me. Like, you know, it's like probably three, 400 people there. Um, And what a solo 401k is, it's, it's a type of 401k. There's a lot of different types of 401ks, but this type of 401k is a self-directed IRA where you can take your money that's in there and you can choose what to invest it in. So that means, let me give you an example, uh, because this is, oh, dude, so, so good. Um, So let's just say that you've got your TSP and you convert that into a solo 401k. Now you've got, I know you got more than this, but let's just say that you have $20,000 that you agree that you want to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. Well, there's rules and regulations on this, which, you know, again, this is for entertainment purposes. So go do your own research, but I can dive deep into this. But for this topic, like I'm not going to dive super deep into it. OK, so there's more to this um, part. If you want to know more, reach out and I'm happy to help. But the solo 401k would allow you to take, let's say, 20k, give it to me, which is called lending. I will then in turn turn around and give you a, a, a return on your investment. And let's just say that you invest that 20 K and I go in and buy a house with it and flip it. And we turn around and we make an extra 20 K and I keep 10,000 and you keep 10,000 right now. You, because it was solo 401 K you can't be directly involved in the activity. You can only lend, you got to be hands off. All right. And that's where I was talking about. Like there is more that people need to learn about this and we got some really good resources um for it as well but what what's crazy about it is i made 10k active which means i get taxed pretty hard on that 10k i made follow me Mm -hmm. you made 10k passively and you use your solo 401k to lend that money and that 10k comes back to you so you receive 30k tax-free and you put it back into your ira Interesting. Yeah. Gold. Yeah, I don't know about that. Gold, bro. Gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like And once you and once you heard once you heard that that gentleman talk about that, like it was immediately just there was no thought process in your head. You were just like, real estate's it. Yeah. Yeah. It was hands down, man. I mean, because like what options do you really have to create wealth? You know, like a business, there's only two ways to make money. And I'm not even talking about businesses. I'm talking about you as an individual. There's only two ways to make money. One is you have a product. All right, so that's a physical, digital product, either one. And you take that product and you find people who want to pay you money for that product. That's one way. The second way is a service. And a service, you know, we can chop that up a bunch of different ways. But to the foundation of it, anybody that has a job, you're providing a service. You're showing up and you're responsible for doing something and you get paid a certain amount for that hour that you did that something. Right. And then that service um, career, you know, can definitely go up, you know, in higher value. For instance, like we can bring back in a doctor, right? Like they're providing a service. And that service is valuable because not many people can do it, right? Mm -hmm. So they make more money than somebody who's flipping burgers. Yeah. Right? And that's where we talk about skill stacking 
right? Because I think, you know, we've all been lied to with a lot of this stuff. And it's just like, oh, well, I can just go and get a good career. And once I learn this, like, you know, I'll make a good money and I get retirement. And that's like air traffic, dude. Like, think about that, dude. Like, you know, we, dude, I drank so much of the air traffic Kool-Aid. It's not even funny because, you know, I had the plan from the day one joining the military that I was going to serve six years, get out, go to a federal, uh, aviation administration and work there. And I was going to retire at age 56 because I found that out before I joined. Mm -hmm. I like, Heck yeah. Like I'm retiring early, you know? And on top of that, I've got great medical. I've got TSP, which is my retirement. Right. And on top of that, I've got a pension where they match it and all this money's just going to stack up and I'm going to live like a King. Right. I just knew that. And then I started really doing some research and really diving into it. And that's not the case, especially when I showed up at Greensboro and half of the facility was at retirement age. And I started paying attention to these older gentlemen that I respect so much. Like these are some amazing men, but they ended up separating, retiring. And a couple of them I had conversation with conversations with during the time where, um, I'm training and they're talking about what they're going to do after they get done. And it's not enjoy life. It's I'm going to go work part time somewhere else to fill in the gap that's created. I can't. I can't. Uh, that's not in the cards for me since I met you before. Yeah. Before it was just like, Dude, that's Kool -Aid. Cause, cause technically I can retire at 50 and a half years old. Because and then I'll have my I'll have my buyback time from the military yep. and I'll I'll retire with uh, was it 20 I could retire at 29 essentially 30 years because I'm yeah. like a short of 30 years, you know, but what is what does that get, you know, and not until I met you and just to be completely transparent with the audience, I don't own any property. I don't I am very ignorant to the real estate stuff, but through the projects that I'm doing with Eric through you know, TLC and deal boss and you know, the, those services right there, I've learned a lot about it and I still have not broken the surface on the stuff that you've learned over these past, what is it going on now? I met you in 2018. So that's six years. Let's give you another three years. So almost 10 years of doing this, I would say, right? No, nah, I've been doing real estate for seven years, seven. I thought, I thought it was longer than that. Well, I mean, that just proves my point that like I gave you more time to be this successful and you actually did it in less time. Yeah. But um yeah, dude, that was a that was a good answer. <laughs> I think you kind of explained it, man, which it could be used to we should do an episode on that with um which career I think which career is best choice is best for you. I think you Bro. could go on dude, hours air about traffic that. is an amazing career. It is. We're not well, I'm not downplaying right. it. Dude, I down love air traffic. Mm -hmm. but and the reason i love air traffic is because it's challenging mm -hmm. not only is it challenging you get paid well but not only do you get paid well you get paid breaks where you can go work on your business while you're at work and then you can separate and uh have the life that you've always strained for like dude like i i was truly blessed by becoming air traffic controller you know but at the same time I can absolutely talk about how I was, it was a uh, crutch, right? Mm. Like it was a curse. I used to call air traffic a curse. Um, I used to tell Lori that, dude. I used to tell Lori, like, you know, it's a curse that I was, we was blessed with me becoming an air traffic controller and life being so freaking easy, you know, because, dude, like, you know, your, your federal career, which means you never have to worry about a paycheck coming in. If you get in debt and stuff, like there's stuff to help you. Yeah. Right. Like there's so many benefits being a federal employee. It's not even funny. But the curse part of it is people stop developing themselves. And because they stop developing themselves, they plateau at a very low level. Mm -hmm. And they like, dude, like air traffic gives you like rocket fuel to go through the roof. And even me, dude, like. Like, I have not accomplished anything. Like, I'm very much not accomplished, 
right? Like I, I look at what I've got and like, dude, it's it's garbage. Well, compared to what I compared to like we're looking at me and then looking at you, like I look at you of having accomplished a lot, which leads into question number two, which I'm gonna ask you now, is how important was it or is it? We can use both of them. How important was it or is it to have a mentor? in the early stages of your real estate investment, if you had one, I thought that was like something good to ask because, you know, the first person that probably mentored you indirectly without you knowing was that guy at the Marriott. You heard that message and that was like, bing, that was your first light bulb moment. But in your, in your experience and in your, Mm -hmm. your ventures of real estate investing, have you had real estate mentors? Yeah. So this is actually a very sensitive t- topic when, uh, I, when I talk about it, dude. Like, it is ah, uh, share what you like, want. Like. <laughs> no, nah, I mean it's good, man, because people need to hear this stuff, dude. Because like, it's not talked about nearly enough, and what you never hear is all of the people who failed because they was misled. First, let's define what a mentor is. All right, a mentor is someone who has a certain set of skills that you are trying to attain. That's it. It's not their values. It's not their principles. It's not the man or woman that they are. It is the skills that they have and you've seen that they have that you want to attain. That's a mentor. Then there's a hero or somebody you look up to, somebody you want to be like. Those people are not mentors, all right? They may have those same skills, like they can be a mentor in a certain area, but a hero, and the reason I'm saying this is, is I think it's really important to define this um, as soon as possible in any type of growth journey, man, because like a hero is someone that you want to mirror. You know, it's like that bracelet, right? What would Jesus do? Yeah. That's a hero. Right. It's somebody you want to imitate and be like. Mm -hmm. I have met mentors that I looked up to and I was just like, man, I want that life. I want, you know, that wife. I want that those kids. I want that pool. I want that car. I want the house. Um, I want all these things that they have. And dude, I meet them. Toxic. So toxic. Really? Terrible people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there's actually a quote, man. It's like, if you ever want to be disappointed, just go meet your mentor. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm you know. talking to him right now. <laughs> huh? I said I'm talking to him right now. Oh, man, hopefully I don't disappoint you. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, You got me no. on that one. That one's painful. Well, it's true, though, right? Like, dude, like you get to know me at a personal level. Like, there's mm-hmm. stuff that I do that I'm not proud of. And if you learn about it, how I respond about that. Is it humility? Is it not? Right. Mm -hmm. Did I learn from my mistakes? Did I grow? And a lot of these people do like, you know, I I don't want to say they got blessed because absolutely they work their tail off to get to where they're at. But at the same time, you know, like, like the Bible says, you know, um, money is the root of all evil. Well, it's not money. This root of all evil It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. Uh, but also when you start getting money, what happens is, is you start getting all these opportunities that can lead you down a dark path, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so anyway, back to your question, like mentors that I've had, dude, I paid for all of my mentors. I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, the very first one was that three day event that I'm talking about. And I spent $55,000 that I did not have. Damn. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I joined, you know, a real estate mastermind program that, you know, promised me great success and promised me to give me all the tools and resources that it takes to be successful in real estate. And to make millions of dollars and, you know, to the biggest thing they sell is, is quit your W-2. That's the biggest thing they sell, right? Um, And notice the word I use to sell because you are being sold, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's being sold, whether you like it or not. Um, Yeah, so I spent $55,000 that weekend 
and that I did not have all on a credit card. And, um, me, anyway, me, you know, I brought Lori in and I told her, I was like, Hey, this is what, this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, I looked at her and I was like, you know, in, um, two years times, like we're going to be millionaires. Like I know it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, you know, I wrote that, you know, goal down and we started investing and, you know, uh, it, it, I didn't hit it in two years, but I think it was around like three years after that we hit it. And now we're pushing over two and that's assets too, right? Like that's net worth, like that's equity money, right? Not cash. Um, so there is a difference on that. But reason I share that is, is because, chasing that dream and i told lori like this is what i'm going to accomplish my wife who at the time was i can't say she was a terrible teammate but she was the wrong teammate and that's hard for me to say because like she's a wonderful woman she's great but the growth mindset dude um this is where I'm building Empowered Homefront. So this question right here, I'm going to explain to you why we have Empowered Homefront and why we have Deal Boss Project. Empowered Homefront, I've learned and we developed how to work together as husband and wife. And one of the biggest issues is, is one person wants something big and the other person is happy where they're at. And that balance gets pulled in so many different ways. So for instance, with me and Lori, we started flipping houses, we started buying rentals, and she has to learn a skill set, but she doesn't want to learn that skill set. Right? Instead, it's me coming in and I'm saying, oh, you know what? I'm working all the time. You're staying at home. Yes, we got kids. I'm not giving her credit on raising the kids. I'm just adding more to her plate. That at the time, quite quite frankly, even though she said I could do it, she's like, yeah, like, we'll do this. Like, you know, whatever you want, like, we'll figure it out. Um, and the reason she said that is because we've had incidences before that where she knows whenever my mind gets set, she is not telling me no and nobody else is either. <laughs> right. And anyway, my point with that is, is one of the biggest issues with the American family is poor communication on where they want to be in the future. So whenever. And did, you, and did you not feel like any of the mentors that you were sought after, like preached, like gave any insight on that? No, none. Zero. Zero. They don't even bring it up as an issue. Right. <laughs> um, they don't, you know, talk about how you should sit down and actually come up with a plan. They don't talk about how you may talk to your spouse, you know, husband or wife, and their mind is just not ready to hear uh, these next steps. And that's a true statement. You know, like me and you can read a book and I'm going to take something completely away different from that book than you read. Right. Because I have differing experiences. Mm hmm. Uh, you're going to take something away different than I have because you have differing experiences. Um, and then if we talk about what we learned on that book, well, now we can come together as a team. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't realize that. I'm glad you pointed that out. And then now I know that information too. And that's a basic concept of communication. But husband and wife, like, I don't know what it is. Like, we just don't do that. We try to do that. We'll, we'll do things like, hey, once a week, we're going to sit down at the dinner table and we're going to talk about our goals and all this other stuff. One person will be 100% on board. The other person is just like, yeah, baby, I'll do it for you. But I really don't want to do this. Like, what's the freaking point? And then they show up and they don't show up. And what I mean by that is, is like they're there because they feel obligated, but their mind is not ready to put in that work. And there's something very special about getting that gear to turn. And that's what Empowered Homefront's about, right? Ver both with spouses and children, you know? Um, it's it's so, based off the principle of being a team and not in competition. So would you call, I mean, granted, I'm a part of this, but this is just me picking your brain with so everything you're talking about and relating it. Um, back to the mentorship question, would you consider 
that Empowered Homefront is a movement that mentors people in all of these things that we want to bring to the table, the health, wealth, relationships, all that kind of stuff. Because what I'm hearing from you is you first started off by answering saying this is a sensitive subject and you kind of giggled about it. You brought, it was a natural reaction to like, Oh, this is a tough subject, which <laughs> is a great response. You know, I was like, Oh yeah. hell yeah. Let's get into this. Um, so because of those negative, you're turning those negative experiences into a positive outcome because you're wanting to provide all these people who have the same mindset or want to develop into the same mindset. What, you know, what you have and they want to reach the same goals and share. It's very relatable. Since you saw that and had those negative experiences, you're like, no, 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 no. I don't want anybody to go through that again. This is how. Yeah. So one, you can't avoid not going through this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, You look out there on social media, all it is is people trying to sell you stuff. Mm -hmm. Get rich quick. Get your mind out there. Every one of them is just trying to sell you their thing. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to truly help you. And there is a huge difference. But, like, you know, like, I'm going to, like, tell them myself a little bit right now. But at at the same time, like, you know, I want to be honest. I want to build a community there's only one community that I would actually back and that's sub two pace more be uh, sub two community. Mm-hmm. Um, it's by far the cheapest community to join and it's the most value. Uh, there's so much information in there and it's great community and they do, they do recruiting very well. They get rid of bad um, apples, right? They remove bad people, but it's missing a lot. I have, like I'm a part of probably 10 masterminds um, and a lot of them I paid well over $30,000 to join. Right. Um, They're all the exact same except for sub two. Um, It's information without action. That's what it is. And you want to provide the action. Yes. That's deal boss project. So now we're, we're crossing over into deal boss project. Mm -hmm. Right. So empowered home front to be clear and like to put a bow around that is that's our community of families, American families who want more in life. And what we're going to provide in empowered home front project is the commute. I just called that a project, which it is, but normally I don't say projects. Empowered home front is, is you're getting around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Um, So, for instance, one of the key things about Empowered Homefront is I've got a 12-year-old daughter. They all just turned ages, too. So, like, she just turned 12. I got a 9-year-old boy and a 7-year-old boy. I want them to get in front of other children who have like minds at a very early age. Why, Why should we have to send them to private school in order to get around kids who come from, you know, families that have a different mindset about money. Mm -hmm. Instead, why can't we just create these mastermind programs, right? Like Napoleon Hill talks about masterminding and he talks about how important it is to get around like-minded individuals going to church. That's the reason people enjoy going to church because everybody goes to church for one reason. Right. And they go to church for that one reason to learn more about God, Jesus, to get closer to God and Jesus. Right. And they feel like they're giving back in some way. Like it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Why, why, why don't we have anything like that for the kids? Why don't we have anything like that for husbands and wives? So one of the core concepts is, are you a roller coaster or are you a carousel? A roller coaster is the person in the relationship who's always going after the next thing, who's always trying to get better, who's always moving, who's always pushing and applying so much freaking pressure to the carousel that they can't breathe. And the carousel is just trying to keep what they have. And the carousel is running the household or the carousel is uh, providing, you know, consistent money in the bank. 
But then the roller coaster is always like, hey, what's next? What's next? What's next? And they can never get on the same page because they don't know how to communicate these things because it's very different in their minds, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got Deal Boss Project. Now, Deal Boss Project, dude, very simple and so freaking valuable. Um, so this is our real estate uh, mastermind, but it's a project, okay? The reason it's a project is because our number one goal is just to make high-level wealth creation through real estate accessible to everyone. Why should we have to, you know, do 20 deals, 40 deals before we understand team concepts, systems, marketing, outreach, consistent lead flow? Why should we have to pay $55,000 in order to learn what wholesaling is? or learn what uh, being a landlord is, or learn what flipping a house is. Why? Right? That information is free. Like, it's on YouTube, right? Why Why should we have to pay 55 k to have someone else tell us the exact same thing? But not only do they give you surface-level information, meaning none of that is executable. Instead, it's concepts. And what Deal Boss Project gives you is, is the vehicle. So. There's not a mastermind out there that gives you the vehicle. All right. We have a business in a box where literally you sign up and in one month or less, you have a complete real estate business. That is your business name, your domain, your website, your branding, your outreach, your marketing, your pipelines. Uh, you even got your underwriting teams. You've got you know your offer set up. You understand what your exit strategy is. All these things are done for you. And then you don't even have to understand what high level marketing is because like there's multiple stages and I'm throwing a lot out there on purpose right now because like real estate isn't simple, but it can be. And that's what Deal Boss Project's all about. Mm -hmm. Right. So we broke it up into stages. We got stage one, two, three, and four, and each stage requires certain things. We also teach you and train you on how to hire a virtual assistant for three, four, five dollars an hour and have them run your operation while you continue to go to work and w and work and make money in your W-2 so that you can pay in order to get your first property. So you can go out and get a loan on your first property. Because that is your biggest asset. If you got a W-2, one of your and you don't own any properties right now, one of your biggest assets is you can go to a bank and you get a loan. But if you don't find the opportunity, a good opportunity where you can make money, then you're going to be set up for failure, right? So anyway, Kevin, like the whole thing on a mentor is most mentors are garbage, right? And I've got a ton of them. And it's not because they don't know what they're doing. It's not because they're terrible people. It's mainly because their true intentions is to get you to buy their products, not for you to be successful. Seems like it's a big stroke of ego. Yes. Yeah. I got one mentor, dude. Like, um, again, I do, I think I paid like 45 K for, you know, his, his program jumped in there, dude, it's got a bunch of information. Um, and supposedly he does deals like all the time and has a team. And I go to an event, and it, it was a uh, um, sales call event, meaning like he gives you a list and you're calling. And, dude, I'm good on the phones. Um, and everybody else there were, like, very new. Like, not many people has done anything as far as deals. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and, um, dude, we start banging the phones. Like, we're hand-dialing, Right. And um, I'm listening to these people, dude, like, you know, he gives you this basic script. Um, he doesn't explain concepts on what you're trying to accomplish. And, dude, it's just, it's terrible. But this is the story. This is where I really realize what I'm trying to explain to y'all now. I get on the phone with this gentleman who owns a 18-unit apartment. And I can, I'm going to say convince, Okay. Um, I convinced this gentleman that the best option is to sell on creative finance, meaning 
essentially we take over the apartment and he walks away from the deal. Right. And I convinced them that for multiple reasons, like I'm not going to go into like how to actually do this stuff. Okay. I'm trying to keep it very basic, but like there's two ways to buy real estate. You can do it with cash or you can do it on terms. That's it. All right. You can pay all cash for real estate or you can buy it on terms. And essentially what I'm saying is I convinced this guy that his best option was to sell on terms to me. And what I did was when I was on the phone is I wanted to see how a big real estate operation worked. That's the whole reason I went to this event. I was trying to learn how they did it. So I tee up this call. I, I yell at, you know, um, the leaders there, which was supposed to be like the head of the, the acquisitions department, right? And I'm like, hey, this is what I got. Everybody's freaking out. Like the whole room is like, oh my gosh, like Eric just locked up, you know, an 18 unit apartment complex, which was true. I had a verbal commitment already. All right. Only thing we had to do is get the paper wet. And what I mean by that is like, he's got to sign the contract. So we had to write up the contract and, and send it out. And you don't call it a contract, call it agreement. But um, I'm trying to stay away from teaching and keep it basic. Um, so Anyway, I, I tell this guy, I'm like, hey, I'm going to hand you over to our um, acquisition specialist who's going to help, you know, break this down and, and, and do the next steps. Dude, I hand it off to the, to, to the lead. He destroys the deal. Destroys it. I'm talking about he immediately goes in with this commission breath. We, we call it commission breath in sales, which means like you're talking to somebody with the intent of like just pushing them, like I'm getting paid, I'm getting paid, I'm getting paid. And you're no longer trying to help them. And mm -hmm. dude, it's, it's what makes sleazy car salesmen sleazy car salesmen, right? Like if people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Commission breath is terrible. Dude, like I literally had this guy verbally committed to selling his 18 units on terms at his price. And we was going to have a 30-year payment plan. And he was just going to sign it over to us and we're buying it on his terms or, or sorry, at his price. And we're going to pay in payments and in installments for 30 years. It was done verbally committed, handed off to the acquisition guy. And the guy gives him a couple of objections. The seller gives, you know, this so-called expert, a couple of obje objections. The guy loses rapport immediately. Right. And rapport is like, hey, I trust you. Right. Rapport is trust. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that happens, um, he he feels it go down the shitter and then he hands the phone back to me. You know, and then I'm just like, what would what, what do y'all do in this situation? Like you're not able to get him to sign the contract. And what it was, what one of the big objections were is he didn't want to sign the contract right then. Instead, he was wanting to, you know, look into it a little bit, um, find out who we were. He wanted credibility. He didn't trust us enough. That was the big objection, mm -hmm. right, that he delivered. And the guy just couldn't do it. Instead, this is what they said. Hey, send him the explanation video. And that's like this little YouTube video that explains creative finance. All right. It's really just, I mean, it's, it's cool. But at the same time, it will never overcome trust. I built trust with this guy, but then when I handed it off to this team who supposedly does a lot of deals, destroyed it. Then I go to Pace. All right. So exact same weekend, I had another mastermind, dude. And I, Pace Morby is absolutely amazing, dude. Like I would never like that dude, like hero status. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I met him in person. I've hung out with him. Um, and he carries himself a very special way. And I've seen that, pictures of you with him. Yeah, yeah. And that's something like I want to be like, right? And there's one thing that I learned from him is always be in a serving mindset. Anyway, um, I asked him about it. I'm like, dude, what what happened? Like, what did I do wrong? And then essentially he's like, Yeah, he's like, they don't, they don't close deals. He's like, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just 
you handed it off expecting them to do it and like they don't close deals he's like just wait you know two or three weeks let it die off and follow back up with them you know and i was like okay uh and you know that was that one incident but then um i, I started building a relationship with somebody internal on their team and come to find out they only do like one or two deals a, a month you know and it's this big operation and I remember the guy, the actual guy that I'm talking about holding up his phone and he says, I can send out one email and I can make $10,000. So if you don't understand what that means, when I talk about, be careful what your mentors are, um, his business model is to sell you his things, not to get success, not to help you become wealthy. He says, I can I can send out one email and I can make $10,000. That means he sends out an email to his list with an offer. They click on the offer and he makes 10K because they buy a product that he's already created. Sounds like snake oil salesman. It's, it's really, dude. Like, you know, I see- I, I, I'm, not, I'm trying not to talk bad about these people because – like, even though it's not my idea of mentorship, and that's the reason I created Deal Boss Project, it's not like it's not value there. Mm-hmm. It's just there's a difference between executable value and only education. And all these mentorships is only education. They will tell you that they'll give you a one-on-one coach, and you'll have a – an hour or 45 minutes with this one-on-one coach once a week. And then you get on the phone with that coach and he can't give you any instructions. Instead, he'd be like, Oh, what did you do? Oh, okay. That's cool. And then you ask them executable questions. Hey, I'm trying to build a business that can do 30, 40, 50 deals a month. I'm at 10 deals a month. What do I need to do next? Coach can't answer it because he doesn't do it. And instead, the coach is asking you questions. This is from my experience, by the way. The coach is asking me questions. And I'm just like, man, people are so misled. And then the community starts reaching out to me. um, And I start building relationships in the community. And all I hear is complaint after complaint after complaint. Hey, you know, I'm forty thousand dollars in debt. I'm fifty thousand dollars in debt. I'm sixty thousand dollars in debt now. They told me to start, you know, spending direct mail money. Now I'm eighty thousand dollars in debt now. I haven't done a single deal. I don't generate any leads. I don't know what I'm gonna do to pay off my credit card bill. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Because I was told that this is how you become successful in real estate. And this- the thing that they was missing. The thing that they was missing is a clear path, a clear journey with a vehicle to take them there. And that's the deal boss project. Let's move on to question number three. (laughs) That was a good ending right there to that one. Um, So you kind of indirectly brushed up on this one. So you go to, you go to this event, you know, randomly after your one of your one of your days working air traffic um you have good and bad experiences with these mentors your first i want you to think your first project that you ever had whether it was a flip or whether you bought a house and just re fix the little things up sold it or whatever what was your first project and how did you how did you decide like hey i'm going to start off smaller did you go in big and go hey Cause I know you, I know what you own and I'm not going to say what you own and let, I'll let you share that if you want. But the very first project that you had when you finally made the decision to go all in on it, what was it and how'd you decide on that? Mm. Was it just a small little house that you flipped and sold or like, dude, so many lessons, dude. So it was a flip. All right. We, we went straight into a flip. Um, 
so the first house we flipped was um, in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and it was a split level. Oh and yeah. Do you know what a split level is? Yeah, you walk right in the front door and you go up or down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's something very special about a flip level when it comes to appraising. <laughs> I learned I learned this the hard way. All right. Uh we still came out good on this deal. I mean, I think I made uh like 20k um on the on the flip, but dude, it was so many lessons, you know. Like you'll see pictures, man, like you um you see pictures of like me, Lori, and the kids, and everything else. You know, working on the project. We've got contractors on the project. We we're firing contractors. We're getting screwed over by contractors. Um, and that's where skill stacking comes into place, right? So, what was the question again? How did you decide on the scale of your first project? I mean, as far as deciding on the on the level of the first project i mean honestly dude like i took what i could get mm -hmm. yeah right. think of like yeah because because these questions are aimed towards aimed aimed <laughs> towards like beginner like someone like me who doesn't own anything that wants to get in it you know well that's where again it goes back to skill stacking man because like literally i took what i could get so the deal was nowhere near a home run. Um, I mean, it, single family house. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you as far as size, right? Like, so the biggest issue with real estate is there's too many ways to make money. All right. Every asset type has multiple strategies to it. So land. Mobile home, apartments, mm -hmm. duplexes, quads, triplexes, right? Single families, um, short-term rentals, mid-term rentals, long-term rentals. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on forever, man. I mean, you got, you know, storefront, uh, commercial property, right? Like, and, you know, mixed use. Like, I mean, asset types, there's a lot of them. Um, and you can go deeper into each asset type and break it down more. So again, I like guess let how me do you decide. Well, here's the yeah. answer that you're looking for. How do you decide is what is your end goal? So you need to define what you're trying to accomplish. That's how you decide. The issue is you do not know what you do not know. And because you do not know what you don't know, the best way to decide is to take action and figure it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's my advice. Take action and figure it out all right decide on one go after it do your first one move on if you don't like it go something else all right but you're developing skills along the way the fear of failure will prevent you from taking action that's it so you, you just went all in you said i'm going to do this and we're just going to go find a property that's a good deal and we're going to flip it and how did i know it was a good deal do i never done anything in real estate before i thought it was a good deal your end goal was like hoping that it was going to end up being a good deal, you know? Well, if yeah, I, I mean, I, I underwrote it to the best of my ability, right? Uh, which there's a trick to this. So here's a hack. Find you a hard money lender and let that hard money lender underwrite every deal that you do. If they will lend on it, it is most likely a good deal. If they say that they cannot lend on it because you are going to be upside down in it, it is not a good deal. There you go. <laughs> well, you've answered question four. How did you fund your first real estate investment? I think <laughs> uh, I was going to ask that one. So we'll move on. Um, I don't know how much time we got left, but um, question number five, and this is a good one because you kind of just said it, but I want you to elaborate on it. And I know you're going to be passionate about this one because you have taught me the concept of skill stacking. And, you know, I've told you before that I don't believe in failure. I just believe in learning opportunities. Yeah. So you relate on these things. Qu final question, question number five. How do you maintain motivation if your first investment does not go as planned? <laughs> oh, man. 
Yeah, what like, cloth are you cut from? Shoo, you know. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's it, dude. Like, oh, I mean, no. you know, like to, I, guess, I guess maybe how you can talk about this is, um, have you just yes or no? Have you had any b- bad deals? Like investments happen. You would have to define what that means, right? Have I lost money on a deal? Mm-hmm. No. Have I lost money? Yes. Right. Has because I've had contractors. I've lost over eighty thousand dollars from you know a, a bad hire on a contractor. I guess like when you go through that and all this stuff, like you know, because I don't know, you know, the saying when it rains it pours. I don't know if that's happened in some of these deals for you where you're like, yes. <sighs> okay, so during those situations, when it rains it pours, how what what is your personal um what is your personal, I guess, I don't know, way of thinking or um, how does Eric keep moving forward and execute knowing that like this isn't the end all be all like, you know, I got to keep on task like this isn't going to take me down. I'm going to complete this. I'm going to finish this because if you just gave up, I would think that's the answer is, oh, that's how a deal. That's how something goes bad. It's when you give up. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, I mean. My kids, you know, uh, Empowered Homefront, like this is one of the core concepts we teach. And it's never true failure until you quit. Like if you quit, that is true failure. Agreed 100%. Yeah. But failure in itself is called growth. So, again, it depends on, you know, what cloth you're cut from. Um, Is real estate for everyone? I believe so. But at the same time, can you get upside down? Can you get in bad financial situation? Absolutely. Um, but can you come out from it? Absolutely. It just depends on are you willing to do whatever it takes? Mm-hmm. And that's what it comes down to. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? So for me, um, you know, we, we've done a lot of flips where, like, you know, we're we're – we're funding the project on a hard money loan, which, you know, to explain that they, they lend money in stages, uh, but you're paying out of pocket until they verify the stage is complete. So what that means is, is they're like, Hey, I'm going to give you, you know, $80,000 for the rehab. And we're going to break this up into five stages. Stage one consists of this and you've got to, you know, they'll come out and send out an inspector, um, and the inspector will be like, yeah, all this stuff's done. And then you send that report back and they send you the money and then you pay off your debt. Right. And that's the way hard money works. Um, but, you know, if all those things aren't done, can you pay your bills? You know, and you've got a bill coming every month, which is the reason like people can't do a lot of flips at one time until they start raising private money. Um, and that's a whole nother topic. But my point is, is. <sighs> Do you want it or do you not, right? Like, one thing about Deal Boss Project, dude, I will absolutely pour my heart and soul into helping other families um, attain financial freedom through real estate. But what I will not do is do the work for you. So one of our big statements is we've done 85% of the work. All you got to do is bring the other 15%, right? You don't have to learn how to run a big operation. You don't have to learn how to market and do all these things because it's done for you inside the system, but you do have to go show up and you got to understand how to use the system. I can't Mm -hmm. use it for you. Yeah. Right. And then after that, there's other stages that we break down and we're going to, you know, do 85% of the work for you, but you have to execute, you know, and then, you know, there's no way that, you could get involved in a flip and be on the job site and a contractor, um, you know, is chopping up full length two by fours and using them as Nellers. And then all of a sudden, you know, your, your, uh, rehab, uh, material budget just went down, you know, a couple of hundred bucks. And like, dude, we can't tell you that. Like you need to fire that contractor and tell them to use scrap wood for a Neller. Right. Like, instead of using good materials, I don't know if that makes sense um, to people, but in short, you've got to take action. All right. Like the core concept of all this is discover what you don't know, 
learn the very basic information needed in order to execute and then go execute the thing. And then while you're executing, you're going to realize that you need to learn something else and you're going to go back to step two. You're going to learn that and then you're going to execute some more. You're going to continue to do this until you can replace yourself in the business, which is step four. And on step four, you will train someone to take your position so you can learn another skill and you can move up in your operation. And that's how you create wealth. All right. Like for people who want to jump in, there's three things that's needed to make a deal. All right. One is experience. Two is money. Those two things, do you already have them? Experience, money. If you don't have them, the only thing you can bring to the deal is the very last one, and that is grit. That is the work. If you're not willing to do the work, enjoy being poor. And on that note, we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up. <laughs> um. Everybody can do it though, dude. It it like yeah. yeah, everybody can do it. It's just whenever things get hard, because they will get hard, um, are you willing to continue moving forward? And you know, it's like cliches it is like how do you eat an elephant? Like one bite at a time. <laughs> you know, like that's that's truly what it is. But one day you'll look back. Um I've literally got videos of me crying in my truck. Grown man, and I'm a big dude, and it is 1 a.m. in the morning, and uh, I'm getting tears now thinking about it. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> I've got my kids in the back seat of my truck asleep, and I am leaving a job site to go home and wake up at 4 a.m. to go back to air traffic. So... It can be done. I remember I remember those days, man. Yeah. I mean, I was there firsthand. What, you know, yeah. Helping you build the house that you live in now. Yeah. yeah. But I appreciate you sharing that little vulnerable moment right there because you know, it means a lot to me as you know, your co host <laughs> and your, your partner in this. Yeah, man. Show, you know, appreciate just, you. as tough as you can sound and as hard as you are on on us to to execute 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 you know you're a human too man and you wouldn't be here without the lessons that you learned so yeah uh, and that's the goal and just just to make it you know quicker and easier for other american families mm -hmm. now um wrap this up eric one last thing where can they find deal boss project Dude, dealbossproject.com. That's it, baby. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A session with Eric about uh, real estate beginners. Um, yeah. Like you said, there's so much to unbox here, and I'm not going to try to talk about it because I, I still need to go through a lot of the education on it too. But um, I did not know anything about real estate investing deal boss project until I met Eric. And although I work with him solely with empowered home front the opportunity is always there with this other this other project that he's created and i'm very grateful for it and i know you guys will be too if you go and visit and see the stuff that eric has built and poured blood sweat and infinite amount of hours it seems into this to help um every american family out there that just wants to take that one step to start their wealth creation and with that i hope you guys tune in for the next episode take it easy Boom.